I think we're both, uh, I'm, I think a couple of months older than you or about the same age. And so I remember turning 60 was kind of a, huh, what am I doing? Moment where I wasn't bad. I'm happy. Uh, this is actually the happiest phase of my life, but I started to weigh things differently. And also I'm facing being an empty nester soon. And I know that you are an empty mm -hmm. nester. So I guess I'm asking you, what's going to happen? I'm, <laughs> I'm really freaked out. And can I have a Gates grant? <laughs> For the second pool in your backyard? Uh, I think a second pool would really help me handle being an empty nester and uh, 61. So just think about it. I don't know if the paperwork I have to fill out. But when you and Bill were together on the, and working on the Gates Foundation, you had certain priorities. Have, your, have what you've wanted to focus on now changed mm. since you guys divorced, since you've, you know, since your life has changed so much, have your priorities changed or things that you want to focus on? Yeah, I would say this. It certainly, I feel like I'm a, in a bit of a transition, right? Like I, I did go through a very public divorce a few years ago, but the foundation's mission I had really brought in back in around 2012, really a focus on women that just as I would be out in the developing world, seeing that women were not far enough, were not didn't have any power often in in their lives. Um, I really started to bring that into the foundation and we have continued that and we continue that work at the Gates Foundation. I'm still there. I'm still working a lot. <laughs> um, but really, I realized that out of our grant giving, we weren't getting as much if we didn't focus on women because they are the center of the family and they often are the ones deciding who eats in what order. Can the kids get educated or not? I also formed, though, in 2015, um, a company called Pivotal Ventures, which is my own separate work, separate from the foundation. That's really focused on the U.S. How do we help women and people of color step into their power in this country? At the foundation, we do work on the U.S. education system because we believe every child should have a great education and they don't. But then to do this specific work in the U.S., I really have done that through Pivotal Ventures. And, I, and again, I'm spending now that I have more time because I have three children who are now, as you said, out of the house. I'm spending even more time on that because to see things like the Dobbs decision happen in this country just just breaks my heart. Should not be happening in this day and age. Or the Alabama court ruling. Or the or Alabama which, court ruling. Uh, and and then you you know you read the judge's decision and it's invoking the wrath of God and uh, you know fertilized uh, eggs and you just uh, I don't know it's uh, it's it's quite shocking. It's uh, Unbelievable. And I believe that if we had more women in positions of power, more female politicians in the state houses, there's 7,000 positions there, more women in Congress, more women on benches in uh, these key places, more women governors, we wouldn't be making these kind of policies. We just wouldn't. That's the truth. And yet we haven't gotten women far enough, fast enough in politics, in their financial lives and even culturally. It's still very hard to get movies made about, you know, what's actually happening in society. We're starting to like to go for these big ticket models. And again, I believe if more women were fully could step into their power, we'd be telling other stories in the society because they have we have a different lens on society. But the world is not there yet. And so as we worked on this, the Gates Foundation through the lens of, you know, low income countries, I realized there was so much more work to be done in our own country as well. I am, I, 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 again, this goes to the point of how many problems there are in the world, but the state of public education in the United States, I always find particularly- It's atrocious. Upsetting that we are the richest nation in the world. We're capable of doing anything and somehow educating our children became the lowest priority is uh, a mind blower. Yeah. And I was very fortunate to go to public schools because there were great public schools where I was going. And I'm, I think that was an amazing experience for me. And then um, it is uh, not a great place to get an education if the school doesn't have any resources. And then you have, you know, it's, 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 and it's, it's a difficult situation here in here in California, here in Los Angeles. Yeah, so. absolutely. Every child deserves a great teacher. And yet 
it's become very much a system about the adults in the system. And I do think after COVID, it became even harder to be a teacher or to be a nurse in society, right? And so we have a lot to really look at in the U.S. to figure out, you know, how can we change this? Because I do believe education, like this from my parents, education can be a fantastic equalizer. But if you don't start with a good education in our country, it just gets harder along the way. There's an amazing statistic. Um that clearly shows the correlation, direct correlation between the more education uh, a woman has, um, the longer she delays having children starting a family because she wants to make sure that she's autonomous. Mm. And it's pretty amazing. It's like a one-to-one the graph is is shockingly simple. And it's all that is that fact is true all over the world. You educate a girl and she becomes a woman. She delays the birth of her first child. She will also, if she can, space the births and have fewer because she knows then she has economic means to put into raising those children. There is literally no country in the world also that hasn't gone from low to middle income without also making sure women had access to contraceptives. Because when you can space those births and have fewer children, just it makes the family wealthier, it makes the family healthier, and then you can educate them. And education changes everything, just everything. I've seen the statistics. I completely believe it's true, yet uh, my upbringing flies in the face of that, which is <laughs> my mother, extremely well-educated, my father, brilliant, extremely well-educated, and I'm one of 75 kids. <laughs> and we were Oops. just, <laughs> but I think that has something to do with the Vatican uh, uh, more yeah. than anything else. Um, <laughs> but no, it is true that uh, that it's, it's very simple uh, and educating Educating women. Well, first of all, educating all children, but 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 specifically educating women is uh, is a very important goal, and that's a very clear that's a very clear fix. I don't want to say it fixes everything, but it, as you said, it um, I think it's all about autonomy, and if you're uneducated and uh, in your teens and having kids, um, your chances of being autonomous and being able to educate your kids and give them what they need, they just start, it just starts to drop very quickly. Very quickly. And, and in many countries, a woman is basically destined for poverty if she starts having children in her teen years. And yet there are many places where that is still the norm. An older man takes a, a young a teenage girl as his bride. And so there are a lot of norms that have to be broken through so that girls can be fully educated. I know you have traveled to Africa with Michelle Obama, Amal Clooney. Mm-hmm. What were you, were you working on a specific problem there? Was there a specific issue that you were focusing on? We were really focusing on child marriage. How do you keep girls from being married before the age of 18? Looking at the entire system, all the way from the legal system, which is a mall's piece of it, to um, how do you educate girls in schools to know not to marry, to be married, which Mm -hmm. is kind of Michelle's piece. And my piece is kind of all the pieces in between, like what connects those systems and how do you break through the norm? Um, Because no girl, no, no child, no girl should be married before age 18. Again, her chance of having any any autonomy in life is minuscule. And we we sat down and talked with me, many girls while we were there about, you know, both how they were trying to break through the cycle, but also ones who had been locked into that cycle. How did they get themselves out and what else could be done? Right. Um, it was quite a quite an informative and eye opening trip, I think, for all three of us. I uh, yeah, I would think um, I would think it would be probably the greatest tool is seeing. So if a, if if a child sees a manifestation of uh, an adult living a different way and succeeding, that might be the most powerful mm-hmm. educational tool. So it's, it's seeing examples. And again, to relate it to my field, I've talked to so many, um, young women comedians who say it took them seeing, you know, 
Ellen DeGeneres mm-hmm. or Elaine Boozler or, or, or I mean, seeing and and on and on and on, seeing over and over, you know, Amy Schumer, seeing these other comedians and saying, "Hey, she looks like me. That's something I want to do," and she's doing it, mm-hmm. and she has her own special, and that might be the most powerful tool of all. Yeah, is show them that it's you Possible. know. Yeah. Yeah. That role modeling. I always say this, that in society, I think men can look up in society in almost any industry and see, you know, three dozen different archetypes and say, well, I don't want to be like that guy or that guy, but I might be interested in being like any of those three. Young girls can't yet look up in society and say, wow, of all the female politicians, there's so many. I'd like to be like that one or of all the female comedians. I don't think I'm like her, but I'd like to be like her. Right. Every industry, we should have at least three dozen archetypes of women. And until we get there, it's just, it's difficult. And society often will tell girls they can't be something or they won't see. You can't really be what you can't see, right? The reason I knew I could be good at math, not only do I have a great math teacher, but my father worked on these Apollo missions. And he talked about often that having women mathematicians on his teams made them better. And I would go to the company picnics with my parents, you know, every summer. And yes, he'd introduce me to the female mathematicians. And I could say, oh, I could be like that woman. Wait, right? How cool was that? that Amazing. <laughs> It. So and and your family, you grew up in Texas. You got you would go to the launches, for sure. You would go to the to the Apollo launches. Yeah. Well, we would watch them. Let's be clear. We would watch them on TV on an old black and white TV. But at the other engineers' houses, we would all get together as a family and watch the Apollo launches because it was such a big deal to my dad who worked on these. I thought you went there in person. Forget it. <laughs> This podcast, <laughs> this, this podcast isn't going to air now. Road trip to Houston. I mean, come on. I watch those things on TV, too. <laughs> uh, you know, come on. And it didn't make you want to be a mathematician? Uh, no, no. It, I just I wanted the outfit. I wanted the, yeah. I wanted the astronaut suit. Yeah. But I wanted to stay here on Earth and be a comedian. Um, I don't know why that makes sense. Well, you wanted Planet of the Apes. I wanted Planet of the Apes. Yeah. I wanted to be an Earthbound uh, uh, astronaut who had gone back in time, actually forward in time, apologies, and spoiler alert, <laughs> to a world that's dominated uh, all by uh, by apes. And we're here. <laughs> <laughs> See, the magic of this podcast is you were talking about such important, lofty, uh, and, and brilliant ways to try and help the world. And uh, we got us to Planet of the Apes very quickly. (laughs) And that's really the magic here, is that we can ruin anyone's mission in life to make it a better world.